in any return to the moon, science is clearly going to be one of the driving factors. Now, of course, we've been to the moon several times in the last few decades. We've had the six Apollo missions that landed on the surface. We've had countless robotic probes both to the surface and in orbit. And of course, we have the huge resource in terrestrial laboratories of the returned lunar rocks. However, the majority of those samples came from relatively similar locations on the surface, geologically speaking. So one easy target for a return to the moon is to look at geologically different regions. For example, the highland older regions of the moon, where we don't have any return samples in the laboratory. Now the moon is interesting not only because uh, we want to understand how it formed as a planetary body, but also because it is something of a, a, a museum. It's been basically unaltered for billions of years. So hopefully we can learn something about the environment in the early solar system by looking at the impact cratering flux on the surface, by looking for trapped solar wind particles, for example. So there's a lot of science we can do not only about the moon, but about the solar system in general and about the Earth itself. Now, of course, depending on the mission, there are different instruments that we might want to carry. Um, we can assume that all missions will have, for example, a camera, not only for navigation, but because there's so much science you can do just by, by having images of the geology. And of course, we also, depending on where we go, might want to look for resources. So in situ resource utilization may become a large factor of any human return to the moon. And there are several instruments you could carry to characterize the resources that you have and start thinking about how you can separate them out. Of course, also in the context of human return, we might want to place instruments on the surface to do things like look at the micrometeorite flux, so the rate at which meteorites hit the surface. Clearly, any, any human habitation, any habitat needs to be protected from these meteorites. And so we need to understand how large they are and how frequently they hit. Then, of course, there's the question of science itself. Uh, one thing we want to do is implant seismometers on the moon, for example. So a network of seismometers carried by several landers and placed at different locations on the moon's surface would be invaluable for trying to understand the deep interior structure of the moon. Then, of course, there are instruments for looking at the local environment at our landing site. So for determining the geology, so the standard instruments that look at the chemical and the isotopic composition of the rocks and the soil. Of course, if we land somewhere particularly special, like if we're going to the poles, then a high scientific priority will be the search for water or water ice. And so one can imagine carrying instruments that will look for surface ice or that could be carried on a rover that might go inside a crater to look for permanently shadowed regions. So of course the science priorities vary a lot according to where we go on the moon, but uh, there are many questions to be answered of high priority and hopefully the Google Lunar X Prize uh, will start to do that.